All right, good morning, everybody. We are live. We are in the studio. 411 Sports World Network. I'm Mr. 411. Hot Top Tony's back. And special, special guest, NFL legend, uh, J.B. Winborn. And you can see what team he reps. Uh, so <laughs> when we get the Super Bowl predictions, we already know the answer there. Uh, but we'll, we'll try to figure out how we're going to get to that answer. But you you already know who's rocking with the Niners. And uh, I hate to drop this on you there. Uh, Jamie, but you know, I, I I grew up a Seattle Seahawks fan, so uh, and I know you had your, I know you had to share your, your your fair share of battles against the Seahawks over the years. Hey, hey, listen, they 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 paid my they paid my boy uh, Julian Peterson a hefty bag coming from San Fran, so you know I'm with them too. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's up. Oh man, that's what's up. Uh, how tell how you doing, man? Man, I'm doing good. Man, feeling good, feeling great. Yes, sir. Felt like outcast right there. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll play this bumper and then we're going to get started. Let's do it. Yes, we are back. It's Super Bowl Sunday. February 11, 2024. All right. Hey, Mr. Jamie Winborn, we definitely appreciate you being on, man. Let's start Let's start from the beginning. Uh, the city you're from, which is not too far from where I grew up. Uh, I grew up in Columbus, Georgia. Uh, but, you know, tell us where, you, where, you, where you're from and a little bit about your uh, city. Uh, well, I'm from, I'm from Wetumpka, Alabama. Uh, you know, the backwoods of Wetumpka, Alabama, actually. Um, you know, it's down, it's like I said, it's, it's south of uh, Montgomery. You know, that's a notable city that people, you know, they know the most about. Um, yeah, man, we talk Alabama, man. They, you know, they came down there and found me, man, way in the backwoods down there. You know what I mean? I, you know, I actually found me by mistake. You know, wow. said, well, you know, I take that back. Some teams knew about me, you know, from the film or whatever, but. The college I intended to go to, I mean, I decided to go to, they found me by another friend of mine, Reed Tankersley, a tight end. He was like 6'4", 245. They was watching his film because he played defensive end and tight end. And then they just hit back like, yo, who's that linebacker? Who? Because, who? you know, he, he making plays, he, you know, he doing his thing. And that's how I got the offer from Vanderbilt, you know. I was, initially was going, you know, I had Cincinnati, um, UAB, Arkansas, you know what I mean? A couple more teams, you know, talking here and there. But, mm -hmm. you know, they, when, when Vandy came along, it was a no-brainer. You know what I mean? Education-wise, I was like, yo, my coach told me, he's like, you you, you got to go to this school. Because other than that, I, I really wasn't paying attention to football like that. I was like, yo, I'm finna go to the Marines. I was an ROTC. I was an athlete of the year. And my brother was a Marine. My little nephew just graduated. He's going to be a Marine. My cousin – also, Jarrell Brad, well, he was Marines, you know, so that's what I was been, you know, trying to do. Yeah, but Wetonka's a nice place, man. Uh, you know, it's a lot slower. Um, you know, obviously, I, I live in Atlanta right now, but uh, Wetonka's a nice place. I'm, you know, I'm getting ready to do something, you know, get me a, build me a house down there or buy something down there. Okay. Um, so I can have land. You know, I'm a country boy at heart, so I need my land and I need my space and my, my peace away from people. All right. Well, how, how did you get started in football? Uh, what what gravitates you to football Man, early on? Listen, I I don't even know. I don't know where I got this from, right? But when I was really, really young, I want to say about four years old, three, four years old, right before I got my first pads and stuff in football, I used to put the socks in my shoulder like this. <laughs> to your mom, I'm like, and I would tell my mom, like, Mom, I'm, I'm going to play football. You know, now, I don't think I knew nothing about the NFL or all that there. I just, you know, kids throw footballs around the neighborhood. And I was like, yo, I'm going to play football. Because, you know, pick them up. We used to play pick them up, bust them. Okay. Yeah. You know, I don't know what they call it in this city. But, you know, you throw the ball up. Whoever catch you, go run that way. That's one point. You score over there. Then you got to come back. And if you get tackled, you got to throw the ball up. Whoever catch it, it's on them. Yeah. That's what we was playing. You feel me? So. I mean, I just, I just like the competitiveness of it. I don't, I don't know. And then my mom put me in it, 
and uh at the ymca and like my first practice or first i know my first game i don't know how many touchdowns i scored I, I i just lost count you know we just you know i was just it man i used to play running back that was my thing yeah okay all right man go, you go, you guys have to say that yeah how you transition from running back to linebacker man uh that happened when there let me tell you I, okay so i played running back first then I, I got moved to texas i had to go i went to live with my uncle in texas arlington texas i went to a high school james Bowie high school and um i i played running back there as well and safety and um so then i moved back to alabama in the middle of the 11th grade season i believe it is to we alabama so but when i got there they had a running back man by the name of greg smith and so I remember this is so funny. I mean, one of the best running backs I've ever seen in my life, actually. I, I You know, honestly, he was the best. He was the best I've ever seen. I think it was like the – I got there like the sixth, seventh game or something like that. I mean, he had some ridiculous number of touchdowns and yards, and I was just like, well, so what is this? Is You know, is this his last year's stats? So, I mean, you know, what's these stats? And they was like, no, that's what he has so far. I said, oh, hell, I ain't playing running back. <laughs> <laughs> so I get to so, – so, okay, I played – so they put me at fullback, you know, just, you know, try me out. And, I, you know, I would go up. You know, I'd do a good job on the linebackers. And I guess the coach was like, yo, just put him at linebacker. You know what I mean? Even though I played it some, you know, in Texas. And after he put me there, I never left there ever in my life. It worked out for you, bro. Yeah, so yeah. Coming from Wetonka, Alabama. Yeah. yeah. The second round, you know, going that Vanderbilt. I was yeah. the all all SEC team, all American. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let the yeah, SEC all that man. accomplishment right there for you. Man, you know what? I'm so I, I ain't gonna lie, man. I'm 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 blessed. Uh you know, just recently they put me in S, as an SEC legend. Wow. And um I was I was really what really made that moment special was I, I I got to go in with a couple of dogs that I used to play with. Uh, the first one was Wesley Woodyard, you know what I mean, out of Kentucky that played at at um, at with the Broncos and then went on to the Titans. Mm -hmm. um, real dog out there on the field, man. Awesome dude, you know what I mean. Made a great living out of that out of the game. And then my other partner who just went in the Hall of Fame, uh, Patrick Willis, you know, yeah. All of these guys, I got to go in with those guys. No Sean Moreno, you know what I mean? Joey Kent, you know, UT's all-time leading passer, you know what I mean? Shane Matthews, uh, um, what's the – the my man, um, dang, I forgot his name, out of um, South Carolina, awesome running back, Rat, not Ratliff. I think it is Ratliff. I'm, I'm not sure. I can't remember his name right to sec, but okay. I got him with a lot of guys that I really had a lot of respect for in the game. And um, that was, you know, a real special moment for me. So um, I really was appreciative of that. Hey, man, yeah. with numbers like yours, bro, it, it, it's, no, it's no run to why. 377 tackles. Yeah. Yeah, that's and, impressive. Uh, uh, 16 sacks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You put up some numbers, bro. L listen, you know what? I'm going to tell you what's crazy, right? So when I went to uh, – what they what you don't see right there is my tackles for loss on the on – the, uh, on on my um in college right so we had this thing called you know it, the top 100 greatest 100 players of Vanderbilt or something like that okay and they was reading all my stats and I and they had they said something I didn't even know I that I still hold two other records for tackles for loss in the season <laughs> I still got two of them I was like dang I didn't even know I had what the I can't remember how <laughs> So yeah, they'll reach back out to you and um want to honor you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they did that. Um, actually, we did that uh at homecoming this year, and uh, man, great moment. Crowd went crazy. All of that, man. Mm -hmm. and, you know, just 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 appreciative of you that somebody respects the hard work that it took and that I put in, man. And that meant a lot to me, especially coming from my my alma mater. Yeah, man, that, you, that's another decade removed from it, bro. You still being honored. That's that's uh, your stats still holding. Yeah, yeah. Ten years later, bro. That's an accomplishment. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm very grateful. 
Yeah, definitely. Uh, speaking of Vanderbilt, uh, let's see. Uh, Casey Hayward, he's out of the uh, yeah, Harry, yeah, Georgia area. You familiar yeah. with him as well? Yeah, okay. yeah. Ball. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's very good. Um, and we got a guy in the Super Bowl, too, by the way, uh, uh, Owen Burks, number 48. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my dude. Yeah, yeah, that's my dude. Matter of fact, it's so funny. When I he get when I went back to Vanderbilt one time, I took I took my family there one time. He was hosting us and showing us around and stuff. And and I just thought that was so neat. Then now he's at the 49ers and he done made it to the Super Bowl. And I'm like, yo, that's crazy how time flies like that. And how you know you keep putting in that work. Mm -hmm. And he made it somewhere I'd never made it to. I never we never made it to the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. You are you here you are, I think, yeah, again. So, you know, it's awesome, man. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Big 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 shout out here to uh Corey. Uh, he's, he's, he lives in the Atlanta area as well. Uh, he says salutes to everybody, to the fellas. What up, uh, Big shout out to OG Two Dollar. Say yes, what sir. up, players. We thank OG Two Dollar. We thank Coy. Two Dollar. Uh, all they do. Yeah, we appreciate <laughs> them. Bro, Two Dollar know everybody. I tell you, <laughs> I mean, the Two Dollar stretch, man. But uh, need to have him up here one week, bro. That's an old school player right there. Got to yeah, know. Yeah, we gotta get him in here. Oh uh, man, hold on. Somebody's at the door. Oh, let's see who's at the door. All right, hey, we got a young fella that's gonna join in on us. Uh, Cole from the low, uh, Colby. We're gonna get uh, young man Colby here. He's over at uh, what, Georgia State right now. That's where he's uh, going to school. Uh, okay. Young, young, young guy in the game, and uh, he young loves coming podcast, man. He's Cole from the low, he got a dope channel, man. And we, we couldn't take this opportunity to have you on here without giving him a chance to. Get him a little shine in and spit and talk. Oh, yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Smoke, man. You know, we, we put you on, man. You know what I mean? You know, hey, hey, we, we definitely do that. That ain't no problem. Yeah. Hey, man, All we right, really appreciate you doing this interview, too, bro. No yeah, problem. Yeah, man. We love it, man. And uh, Carbon Q, big shout out there. Uh, says, what up to everybody? And uh, back to you, Carbon Q, shout out. We appreciate you being up this morning with us on this Super Bowl Sunday. All right. All right. Yeah, I tell you, we're gonna get to that. I can't yeah, wait. Yeah. Uh, I think you I think you're gonna pick the Chiefs, Jamie. Uh but uh <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh uh you did mention your home city, uh and you mentioned something um, you know, off the camera earlier about uh mm -hmm. you know the city and they had something there that's very unique. Uh you wanna touch on that just for a moment? Uh about, oh about yeah, the, uh, yeah, yeah, about the uh, about you know the one the prison that they have there. Mm -hmm. Is that you talking about that? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, yeah, we got the only women's prison there, and um, you know, like I said, you know, growing up, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of things going on. You know, they they got half of my family in that thing, probably. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, mom spent some time there, and and uh, a crazy funny story. So I was playing with the 49ers one time, and one of the coaches had his wife was doing a documentary. We were just sitting on the side, just talking. And uh, this is back actually when Dan Quinn was there, right? Okay. Uh, he was an assistant guy right then. Um, and uh, we were talking with one of the coaches, and he was some, telling me about his wife. And, yeah, she, he was like, yeah, she's doing a documentary on uh, Tutwiler Prison. And I said, Tutwiler Prison? I said, well, well shoot. I said, man, yeah, I know where Tutwiler is. He said, yeah, that's, it, that's in your home. I said, yeah, man, my mom was in, my mom's in that thing right now. You know what I mean? And, and he was like, yeah, you think I can talk to her? I said, yeah, well, I can make something happen. You know, and uh, they actually got to talk. And, and you know, that that helped her out and helped him out, you know. So mm -hmm. that was that was, that was kind of neat. You know, weird how I'm all the way in California and somebody has this going and just so happened, you know, moms was in there at that time, you know, but yeah. uh, no knock on moms and like that, you know what I mean? But yeah, she was uh, going through something at that time. And um, yeah, I thought that was neat. I mean, I, I thought it was crazy. Like I'm 3000 miles away, man. <laughs> man. That is awesome, man. Yeah. Uh, man, man, we appreciate you. Appreciate you sharing, man. man. To uh, be in the draft the second round, bro. That's yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and, and I left school early. Yeah. 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 I left as a junior. I only okay. played. I only played. I redshirted my freshman year. I played eleven games my first year, eleven games the second year, and then I only played nine games that third year. Right. 
uh, you know, when, when we talk about NILs and stuff like that, right, it's crazy, right? Because this would have been the first time in history and still hasn't been done to this day that a player led the SEC three times, let alone, yeah. let alone three times in a row. So they suspended me, those NCAA suspended me for the first two games, which are two run, prominent running games, running teams. And so they ended up, they, they you know, long, long investigation, all this stuff, end up suspending me for $150. No. Worth, listen, listen, worth a free financial advice. What? <laughs> I got to say, <laughs> this, I'm going to repeat that for y'all. Yeah. $150 worth of free financial advice. Yeah, I said so. If it was free. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you bring up an interesting point, man. So now going from going from that to looking at the the, the whole situation with the NILs now. What's your thoughts on this, man? You are you for it or uh, obviously I'm thinking you for it. Yeah, yeah, well, well I am definitely for it. Um, I think it does take an element of hungriness out of the game. Okay, fair. You understand what I'm saying? I I don't think it's fair that a pl- that college players, some of them, are receiving more money than uh, than a guy has, who has made it to the NFL. Oh, uh, but. There's been a whole shift in everything, right? So this name, image, likeness thing has really gone crazy. You know what I mean? In a good way, mm-hmm. you know, in a good way. And and I say that to say, like, these kids do deserve to make some some money, you know, off 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 of their name and image and likeness. Okay, like you know, I don't know if you guys watched that Johnny Manziel story, right? On Netflix, right? Well. Mm-hmm. When he was balling out there and won the Heisman and all of that, his school, you know, brought in like you know two three hundred million dollars in in donations alone. So mm-hmm. they would have him signing footballs for like two three hours. He get he would get no money for it. But they selling this stuff to people, so he didn't get any. You know, he wasn't getting any of the money, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like that's that's unfair. I don't care how you look at it. That's 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 totally unfair. You know what I mean? That they, but I mean, they are giving them us a free education, but the education is far from free. It's basically like you 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 you're taking my you're taking my entire name, everything away from me. You're stripping me of everything of me, and making all the money of me. Yep. What does that sound like? That's slavery, bro. <laughs> Thank you. That, that's slavery. Okay, but people, day. but 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 mind you, people are gonna say, and I do respect this. How is that the same? It's not. It's not the same because you know you get a free education, and I say no. The difference is, is you have to earn that education. Yes. And you have to do the work. I don't just play football and you just hand me a degree. Mm-hmm. I gotta walk to class. I gotta be up all night. I'm tired from running and playing from from training and I still got to go in here and make an A on this test. I know at least at my school, we don't have no basket weaving classes and then like that. No, not right. the other people, but I'm just saying, mm-hmm. you know, every time I would go to class, I'm one of there was never more than four or five blacks in my class in any class that I went to. In college, so there's a pressure there to perform. Because people are already looking at me and saying, oh, man, he couldn't even be here, really, if he didn't play football. But my mind saying, oh, you got me all the way messed up, homie. I was one of three blacks in the, in the honors classes at my high school anyway. I know I deserve to be here. And matter of fact, where your grade at? Because I'm here go mine. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, so sure. I had a chip on my shoulder about that. You know, that's, that's, that, that stuff really meant something to me. Because I, I know I couldn't be in school and I couldn't be looked at. And here I am, a high-profile athlete at school. I got billboards and stuff up and all of that. So they definitely staring at me. They're really trying to look at me and see if I, if he cheating somewhere. Mm-hmm. He can't cheat when his grade higher than, than theirs. 
Hey man, you better come with me, man. Bang bang. Hey man, talk your talk, bro. Talk. Hey man. Talk. There it is. Love that. Love that. Love that. Hey, so so with the NIL, like for example, I just heard a a, a coach. I he just mentioned like there's a player that said, hey, you got he needs a million dollars just to stay. You know, he's not a he's not a starter. He's like a backup. Um, but you know, backups are important too. And so, like that, that's going to dig into your depth of your roster. But what, what's going on here with that? Like, see that? I think that's the next tier to this thing, the next level to this NIL situation. Where some, like, even a Nebraska coach, he he said earlier a couple months ago, like it's going to cost me two million dollars to get the start. Like mm-hmm. it, this sounds like NFL. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, it's it's it's, it's definitely a similar format. Mm-hmm. We're still not talking about the type of numbers that 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 they throwing out in that in them in the league, you know. True. That the, the, the you know the big bag. If if that if the, if they call that getting the bag in the NFL, you can get the truck. You mm. know what I mean. So it's up to you. But and I do see the the point that those those players are talking about. You know, okay, so it's like this. Okay, based on. Can you go back to the portal and get anybody else? If you can, okay, I, I understand that. But if you can't go back to the portal and get anybody else, this guy, those guys have left. I'm, I was a backup, but now I'm your guy. Now's the time. Hey, man, you might have. You need to. You need to run me some. You need to. You need. You know, if it's bar, if it's about bargaining, you need to run me some cash. Now you are taking a risk. But if they can't get anybody else. Is it really a risk? It's just good timing. That's mm-hmm. it. If you yeah. you know you, you understand what I'm saying? I mean, just like yeah. the NFL guys, the amount of money being paid starts with the guy who sets the market. Mm-hmm. After him, you may have a guy that 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 that's nowhere near his caliber, but he falls within the time that the market is is what it is. So you you have to pay to me, you know. So I be I'm, what I'm curious on that situation, and I, I, if I'm not mistaken, you think you talking about the running back, the guy that came this third stream, and now is coming up. Yeah, yeah I know. Right. Well, I want to see how they do handle that. You know what I mean? And hey, he may be asking for a million, but hey, you know, you know, I settle for three, four. I think I <laughs> with that. I think I think that's his strategy, right there. You, you because it's that's what I, it is. But, yeah. Okay, so we've been uh, we've had a long going series talking about the HBCU and how can we improve mm-hmm. on the HBCU system. So you mentioned earlier how you were kind of for the NILs but kind of against it. How would you structure that for like the HBCU setting who don't have the money as the PWIs to pay these these kids those million dollar contract, but they still want to get paid. How would you structure that in the in the, in the HBCU well, system? Well, see, this is this is the thing. Uh, the HBCUs, the problem that 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 they having over there is that they're not able, they're not getting the 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 exposure deals. Mm-hmm. Okay, because that's where ultimately all money comes from exposure. You know what I mean? Um, and for people that don't understand that, there was a playoff game that was only aired on the network of Peacock. So basically, Peacock had bought the rights to exclusive rights to a game, right? So it works like this: uh, the SEC, you know what I mean? They they make these deals with these networks, you know, Big Ten's, all of those, all of these these big conferences. They make these deals with networks on to to show the games. Who who is allowed to show the games, right? Mm-hmm. So that's where a lot of the money comes from, and then also boosters and stuff like that. You know, the school has the you know money that comes in through that way. Well, I don't the problem is that the H- HBCUs don't compete in that area as far as the viewings and, and what 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 the the exposure deals. They don't get into they don't really get into those type of those deals, right? And that's why a lot of people were so upset with Dion, is because Dion was able to affect that. There were you saw people were talking about HBCUs and, and and wanted to see what was going on down there, and because he was bringing people 
to that. It's you know, it's kind of like basically Taylor Swift had went to the HBCU. He's our Taylor Swift. Right. Yeah. You get it? And yeah, yeah. so when he left, everything left with him. So now the bargaining chip to get the exposure is less likely to to be able to happen that meeting because we don't ha- you don't have a Dion down there. You don't have a Swifty, you know, down there. Yeah. See, when you had mm-hmm. Dion there, what that was able to do was open up the door mm-hmm. to a make a bigger deal. Because if you get bigger contract, the school makes more money, right? That's upfront money, man. We uh, once you sign on that line, look, y'all bring y'all own cameras, y'all just make sure to check here. Yeah, that's how that work. So that's the problem we have in, is it with the exposure. It's I don't think it's the level of, of, of talent because arguably I could go down a list of guys that come from HBCUs that are Hall of Famers. Yep. Tremendous players had great careers. You know what I mean? So that's not the problem. It's how do we monetize the HB, HS, the HBCUs? Right? Great trick on that. So do you think having farm players like yourself and uh different players that have joined HBCU in, as a, in a coaching capacity, do you think that's going to help further that process along to where they do get those major deals? With, with, I mean, without a doubt. Um, see, it, it all stems from the main level, which is the NFL. So guys, a guy has to have some experience at the main level, whether that be playing, coaching, or whatnot. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. He has to go back down back to that level, which is a different conference. All of this, you know, obviously it feels what it is. But what I'm saying is. There's a notion out there that and, 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 and that. The talent. In the H, in, the H, in, in, in the conferences and HBCUs and stuff are not equivalent to the talent in the big division one schools. But that is not true. Obviously, now some now there are some bigger players a lot of times and stuff like that. But I mean, we just try, the battle is just something that is just too much money on that side. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because you know it's just too much money on that side. But I do think that when when coaches, players that would experience come down and validate that more, that is the start on how to get people down, get more eyes on it, and. No matter how you cut it, if you can't get on TV, it's never it's not gonna be enough money to make a significant difference. And that's yeah. just a fact. <laughs> you know what I mean? You yeah, you look at the podcasting industry now, every everything is about viewings, mm-hmm. right? Super Bowl viewings, you know, college game viewings, all of this good stuff. Well, HBCU H A H H A B C U schools need the viewings. Because that's their bargaining t- power. That's your bargaining chip. You see what I'm saying? Mm, now we yes. may have you may we may have, and now the other only the other way is okay. The alumni, all of those guys, those women, to give the money, donations wise, right? Because there's some super rich people that have attended some H- HBCUs. Let's start with Oprah Winfrey, huh? <laughs> Let's start with Oprah Winfrey. Well, hey. Even one of them. <laughs> well, you know, Oprah got a lot of stuff going on, too. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I, I see things a whole lot of ways. You know what I mean? Yeah. Is it her job to just come back and say, hey, oh, okay, well, let me just, you know, let me get him a, you know, $100 million. You know what I mean? That ain't her job. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Now, because she's done a lot, though, to be honest with you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But um, is that really her responsibility necessary? No, it's not, but in the same breath. Would it help? We, Absolutely. It will help. Now, yeah. now you know, we did have an individual that would give $100 million and routinely did contribute to HBCUs and Bill Cosby, but that's another story, and yeah, apparently nobody wants to call, take his money. As well as what you see going on in the world right now. Mm-hmm. See, everybody got, see, listen, You, how do you destroy? You destroy from within. That man, you preaching the day, man. Every big time person that we have is on the ropes about fighting with each other right now. Or not necessarily fighting, but 
the 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 the, the media has has them in 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 shambles against each other. Necessary. You see what I'm saying? And that's just gonna knock off about 20 of our best people. We've already had it, you know. If you do wrong, you do wrong, you know what I mean? But it is what it is, but that's all I see out of it. I don't see anything else out of it, you know what I mean? And that and that's the thing. Bill Cos, like you said, was doing this and this and that. He's out the way. That 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 piece off the board. You know what I mean? So yeah. we got to really take a deep look at that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not, I'm not making any accusations. Let's be clear about that. But we need to take a deeper look. And, and you just mentioned something real that, that was important to uh, make sure we go back on. Is that you did say, like, there's a lot of uh, blacks that have, you know, I'm paraphrasing, but have have resources um, that would definitely help. But you also mentioned alumni. You mentioned, uh, you know, key people like that. Um, and just black people in general, I think I'm just adding on time. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we got, I think you kind of, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But we're going to carry on going with it. I think that, uh, see, this is the thing. One, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a hundred percent honest. Are there right? One of the reasons why I went to Vanderbilt was because I thought that that was indicative of what life is really going to be for me. Mm. You understand me? So, well, on that, bro. Okay, well, I don't plan on being around nothing but black people all my life. Okay. Because I know, unless you in Africa, and, and even in Africa, hell, that's just not what I'm 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 I'm, I'm gonna be doing. I, I'm, I know I've done a lot of reading. I've done I got some good white friends, some Indian friends. I got I got all kind of friends. And I said, well, if and necessarily if I if I if I were to go to it, well, first of all, I didn't know HBCU even ask even send me a letter. And I'm that glad was you one said that. We were gonna ask. We're gonna come back. We don't let you finish your thoughts. We're gonna come back to that right there. Yeah, because it had to, listen, because to be honest with you, see, all they had to do was go down there and have the dance team dance for me one time, and I probably would have went. <laughs> but you never came. You never tried, like a Travis Hunt, like they did him. Mm -hmm. and then, you know, I wasn't a big time recruit like that, of course, but what I'm saying is nobody ever tried. And so that's why I ended up going here. Uh, you know, to Vandy because I said, listen, man, the world's got a lot of different people and I'm, I'm from Wetumpka, Alabama. There's always been a fight, you know, for the black man to make it and do what he needs to do. But the truth is, is that, you know, I have some a lot of good white people that are, that were supportive of me and helped me and good friends. I have some black ones. I have some Indians. You know what I mean? Didn't have many Oriental people down there at that time. But what I'm saying is, is I need to go to a school that is indicative of what I think and have work the world's going to be, which has been one of my best attributes after football. The fact that I know all these different people and I can get in a room with any of them and it's all good. You see what I'm saying? I need mm -hmm. to make more connections than just my brothers. You feel me? That's how I felt about it. Is that right or wrong? Mm -hmm. I don't know. You ask me, I'll tell you what story he you know, I mean, that's that's a different perspective on that, and I I, I can respect that. I definitely see the advantages of it. Yeah, well, I mean, I just want to be, I just want to be able to, I don't want to be in a box. Is mm -hmm. how I felt about it. I don't just listen to to hip hop music. I like Red Hot Chili Peppers, Nirvana. I like a couple country songs. You know what I mean? I like some R and B. You know, I'm I'm a, I'm 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 diverse, so I'm that type of person. So it made sense for me to do it like that. And then I also understood that your at back then your whole career you couldn't just jump in the transfer and get out of here like you can. Right. So when I when I went to college, I, I had the understanding that hey, all it takes is one coach not to like you, and your whole career is dead. So at the end of the day, I wanted to have a strong education on behind my name, just in case something doesn't work out. And that that, that was. That. That's that, a great strategy to go yeah. by. Uh, before we get too deep, I've been here. I want to introduce a young man to my left, Cole from the low. Cole, introduce yourself, bro. Hey, good morning, gentlemen. Uh, sorry, I was, I was late. 
I had a couple technical difficulties, but uh, my name is Kobe Cole. I got my own show podcast called Cole for a Low. I talk basketball, football, many other things. Uh, I've been on the show with Mr. Four One many okay. times. Mr. Hot to finally good to meet you face to face. Hey man, you know. And That's thank you for having me. Good to meet you, man. He's a young up and coming podcaster, man. Hey we man, give, keep give keep it going, keep it going, shine, man. Let him get on here. And, Listen, uh, we we gonna have to get each other number. We're gonna have to link up, you know what I mean, and make 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 something happen, man. Let me, I, you know, I got a couple 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 connects and I can put you on to some some things, man. It's a good positive thing you're doing with it too, man. That, that's a blessing. You feel me? You, that's the that's the right way to go. Hey, man, that's huge for you, Kobe. Oh yeah, yeah, we are gonna hey. definitely link it up. Hey, man, listen, man. Hey, man, this thing right here, golden. <laughs> ain't it, man? <laughs> ain't it, man? I'm, hey, look, I ain't even go to Vegas, but man, I'm all in Vegas right with this thing. And I ain't talking about no IG. I'm talking about the people that, you know what I mean? They want to know why I ain't there. I said, hey, look, man, I got to be on a budget, player. And, and, My and man. I, if I ain't, I ain't making the money right now, I got to, you know what I mean? I ain't making money out there right now. You know, that means it's going in the up on the left side. You know what I mean? In the minuses. Hey, man, well, let this, let this be your reintroduction back into the sports world. And, and hopefully you able to take this and monetize it on the other oh, end. Oh, man, well, we, you know, we, hey, you know, we, we do a little something. There you go. <laughs> hey, that's all right. We appreciate it too. Uh Anna, Annabelle. Big, I'll give a big shout out to Annabelle. Uh she's a loyal listener. Uh what's she going says, on, uh, Yeah, so what's up there, Anna? And, and she agrees with you there, uh, Jamie. Uh it's a yeah. tricky situation. The HBCUs don't get the big TV deals, which puts them at a huge disadvantage. That, that yeah, yeah. yeah that, that, because if you when you when you if you if you ever have time anybody, just look and Google. Uh, some of the contracts and the money that these 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 uh conferences are getting for the viewing rights, you know what I mean? It'll blow your mind. That's how the NFL done got went up from back when I played my listen, my first year back in 2001, man. You know, I had the signing bonus, or whatever, but my first year I only made like I think 247,000. Now, this is 23 years ago. Right. Wow. Wow. The minimum now is like seven, eight hundred grand. You you see that difference? Yeah. Work? It ain't just because new players are coming. What it is is back when I played, we wasn't we couldn't we, there was there wasn't very many cameras in our locker room, other than our team camera and NFL Network. Oh, but today, oh man, you got. ABC, NBC, mm -hmm. Peacock, all of these people who have paid for the rights to get in and have that exposure. And those numbers are astounding what the NFL itself has made or is making. And that's why the money is gone up. And that's why when a, a, a owner of a team bought a team and it was like 25, uh, how many, how many, she might have bought it for, you know, 30 million, you know, 20, 30 years ago or something, you know what I mean? Or something like that, right? And, it, you know, and it's worth 5 billion. I mean, like a million, a billion now. When Jerry Jones yeah. first bought the Cowboys, look at the difference in what he paid for it and what it's worth today. Right. Yeah. yeah. See, what people fail to realize is they don't really care if, if, if anybody come to that game. Yep. Because the money been made already. Mm -hmm. You did. See, it's about the exposure. You know what I mean? It ain't about we make a they make a little money, you know, the state makes money. What, how much money you think we're making off popcorn, man? See, you nobody ever thinks about that. Yep. Really? Popcorn, yep. hot dogs, a jersey here and there. Now the 49ers just this time we just set a record. With 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 since the regular season just ended and playoffs up to now. We we've we've made like 25 30 million just off of jerseys, you know, people buying jerseys and all of that. You see what I'm saying? So, but guess what? You know, that ain't the, the players make a little money, you know, they get a little bad, a little something, you know. What I mean, maybe a hundred in the Super Bowl. I think now, you know, it's in the it's in the six figure up uh, uh, mid lower six figure range. You know what I'm saying? Back when I played, you go if people when people make the Super Bowl, you know, what I mean, like 100, 120, something like that. You know, each player now. Yeah. 
But if they can give you a hundred and twenty, how much they made? Well, you hit <laughs> you hit on something very interesting right there, and I want you to kind. I want to get your opinion. Uh, want you kind of expound on it. Mm -hmm. So, with that being said, do you think that the split with the players across the board, no matter mm -hmm. the superstars or the lowest players, do you think that split is fair? And if not, do you think the players' union is working in the best interest of the players to increase? Their, their, their maximize their profitability. I, I I think that the union only has so much power. To, let's 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 let me let me go ahead and say that. What, why is that? Well, because who you think allowed the union to be in place? Mm. You know what I'm saying? I, the 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 owners right. said, "Okay, give them a union." But you know that the union, listen, man, union, you have to play it, play a court, play ball with us, or you're gonna look up and it ain't gonna be no union partner. Because we kicking out enough dollars out here, we know we still can get some people to come play. You see what I'm saying? But so you you're gonna be a union and we're gonna have a union for the sake of y'all feel like y'all got some power. Mm. Well, I would I would dare to challenge back and push back on you and say the power really ultimately lies in the players. If the power ain't in nobody's hand but the, the person who is paying. Okay. In life, that is true. There's two people that got the power. The who can either you are by three people. There may be a person, you know, in the MLK range. The people love you and follow you, but then you got. People then there's a person like uh Bill Gates when he says something because of his money, you gonna listen. And then you got people like that was what that used to be in cahoots with all of them. People like Chapo, who violence is what they do. The power is in the violence. But guess what? The other two people got together and said he ain't acting right no more. Get we him up out of here. That's that's what the union is for the NFL. Bro, you is on here cooking today. Well, I mean, I'm a Vanderbilt graduate. I don't know why you ask me this stuff and you, if you didn't want to hear it. Hey, man, I'm here for the controversy, <laughs> bro. This is what we, we love this, bro. Yeah, this I mean, it's just true factors. <laughs> it's just true factors, and, and it's just what it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. There, you know, yes, everything in life is going to take progress and time. Now, back to what you were saying about that. What I Now, one thing I would like – I. Okay, I have never been the, the guy that made the 50 million in a year. I never made it in my life, really. But I was in the midish range of a guy, you know what I mean? Like my highest year, I made like what I I'm gonna say like 3.2 million one time one year when I came off a of neck surgery. You know what I mean? I didn't even know if I was gonna be able to play football no more. That's why I rock with the nuns like that too. You know what I mean? They gave me that. They didn't even know, you know what I mean, if I was gonna be able to play or not. You feel me? And 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 they gave me that 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 one year like to show what I could do, but obviously they switched the head coaches. I had three head coaches in five years. That didn't help me. But hey, I'm just a player. Y'all, it's y'all's team. Um, but do I think that one player is worth fifty, and then a guy that's playing on the other side is making you know two, three? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get that. I really think that it could be almost an evenly thing amongst starters, guys that play, right. right? But they have it set up to where this is crazy, to where the draft and how they have done these new numbers, how they doing it now, we're going to always make money because we have guys that are coming in for cheap mm. that are playing – that's going to offset what we spent on the guys that came in for high money. The whole time they bat, you know, everybody, they battling to get that new contract, da, 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 da. but get what I'm dealing with as an owner, I'm dealing with contracts that don't do nothing but go up. And the rate that we move up is not the same rate that we have to pay y'all. Well, what can be done to kind of level that playing field since you say the unions, Aren't really working in the best interest of the of the, of the players. You want to know what the can truth? we do to level that playing field? You can keep playing, 
you can get a good con great contract invest the money elsewhere and get collectively try and get together to buy you a team but even mm -hmm. when that but even when that happens guess what mm -hmm. this is what a lot of people don't know those owners have to agree for you mm -hmm. to come to the to to the master's table preach man you still got to you still got to get uh what accepted into still, the club you still have to be approved yeah, they vote on it, don't they? Listen, there's a reason why Roger Goodell is making 50, 60 million dollars a year and don't play no slap. Don't play no snap. He Great dude. I loved it. He is the median between me and everybody else. Mm -hmm. Right. You see what I'm saying? So now Roger Goodell, I love him. He, now he, he, I will give him. I will tell you uh, the truth about him. You know, he really does try to uh, do what you know. He tries to work for both sides and tries, you know. And he's a good, honest dude like that. You know, he's like, look, you, your, your talent is football. Their talent is they already had the money. I need you to do this keep him happy you know you he tries to you know he's like the lawyer you know what i mean that's mm -hmm. what he is actually he, he, yeah he's the lawyer the owners are the judge and you are sitting in court saying but joke you sitting in court is really you playing sports so goodell just say hey what would you like to do uh, we like this and they say hey would you like this he said hey man go on out here we ain't gonna give him that you tell them that stop doing that pick something else that's not even negotiable and, it, and if they say that, it is dead. You know, that's the power that they have. I mean, if I own the team, to be honest with you, I'm going to be the same way. You ain't going to come. You work for me, man. You ain't going to come telling me what to do. Well, they got the people out here running the ball. Supposedly, <laughs> the union is supposed to, you know, now this is we, what's told we, us. But like we fund the union. Mm-hmm. We fund the union as a who you think fund the union. There you go. <laughs> well, keep pulling wow. that, keep pulling that curtain back, man. Give us that behind the scenes. <laughs> hey man, hey, it gets deep, but you know, guess what? I am appreciative of all of it. I ain't gonna lie. You know, y'all check listen, people always say, Why you why you rock these 49 like this? Listen, man, I ain't had to work a day since I stopped playing. Hey, Amen. Okay. So, and they asked me mainly why. I said, well, they didn't have to choose me. They did not. There were, there were, I was the 47th pick. There was, I want to say, 240 some picks that year. 42, 242 picks. Yeah, they didn't have to put that picture. They didn't have to make that picture happen. They didn't have to. So I'm forever loyal for that. That's just how I rock. Now, other teams gave me something, too, and I appreciate them for the opportunities, too. But see, coming out of college, they are the ones who changed the life by saying, I believe in that little kid from Wetonka, Alabama. They ain't won no games. They ain't win no games down there in Vanderbilt. But I think that we can make this kid and have him playing. And plus, they blessed me. I had never been to the West Coast. Hell, when I got drafted, I thought I was going to L.A. by Tupac them. You know where they was at, but I, I ain't know nothing about no San. I looked at my ticket; it said San Jose. I said, "What the hell I'm going to San Jose for?" <laughs> <laughs> you know he country boy. <laughs> <laughs> I went hey. to San Francisco. Ain't what I'm going to San Jose for. <laughs> oh man, that's that's real stuff there. But uh, by the way, I, it was a couple of def, uh, difficulties, there, technical difficulties. I did not get to hear your mm -hmm. comment when you said that no HBCUs recruited you. Uh, why do you think that happened? You know what, man? I don't even know. I don't. I, I really don't know, man. Um, see, here's the thing about me too. I didn't. Where I'm from, man. There's not a ton of people that went to college. You know that I know of personally. You know, you kind of go to school, go to high school, you do your best, you go, you go work at Russell down the street at the plant, or you know something like that. You know, you, and you start your life. You find a girl you want to marry. You marry her. You have, start having kids, and you work. 
That's just the way that we do it down there. You know what I mean? You become just be a good person. And so I didn't know much about colleges and stuff like that. Either. But when I went to Vanderbilt to visit, not only was it a great college, we were surrounded by black colleges, TSU, MTSU, mm -hmm. Fisk, mm -hmm. Meharry. So what they did was they tricked me. Well, it's not a trick, really, but they took me over there to the to, to around where the black schools was. Yep. And I'm like, yo, you know what? You know, this was a five minute drive. I'm like, I could go to this school. This school good. Like, you know, I could go across the tracks and get loose. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm coming. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, cause you just that's interesting. So you can that tell is. me the PWIs, the Vanderbilts are using the HBCU as a recruiting tool to get players to come to them. Why wouldn't they? It is a, no, 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 no. I don't mean that in a negative way. No, I'm See, not saying it's, that, it's just an advantage that you have when you're smack in the middle of Nashville, Tennessee. You just yeah. cross the track, and then you have Fisk, Meharry. It, uh, TSU, all of these schools over here, and they are jumping over there. It's bumping over there. See, I, I got the luxury of playing. I At the end of my career, I also went back to play for the Titans for two years when Chris Johnson went for 2,000 yards. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was already, the, you know, who I was because of what I had did in college when I came back there. See, I used to – I worked at Crest Cadillac in college. I used to take Coach Fisher – Deliver his cars to him out there in uh, Bellevue. They had uh, some temporary camp stuff out there. I used to go try drive his car. I worked for Chris Cadillac. I drive his car. My buddy come behind me. We drop Coach Fish car off, and then we go back. And then that's how I got to see what the NFL pros was doing. So we had a long history there with all of that stuff too. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I took full advantage of, of Nashville when I got there. You know, I wasn't just over yeah. there on the black side having the fun at TSU. You know, I, you know, I've been banned for from several parties. <laughs> <laughs> you know, back then when we when we used to have fun, it wasn't even a good time unless you, you when the club was when the, when the, when the party was done, you didn't have a shirt on. <laughs> yeah. like hey, you, got all, you got all the fraternities, sororities, all you know. Mm -hmm. It was just great, you know. But then, but I but this is not where I attend school. I attend right. school at Vanderbilt. Mm -hmm. And it's so funny because when people see that you go to Vanderbilt, the first thing they would say, oh, you must play a sport. I used to think that's what they were saying just for academics only. But if you get on your computer and Google how much it costs to go there, that was part of the reason. It wasn't just because they were saying you're black. They're saying it's expensive to just pay to be able to go to that school, which is as I'm a parent now, now I understand that even more. Like, yeah, you're mm -hmm. right. Because the, the price of going to that school now has gone up. It's like $300,000. It sounds like, wow. sound like those HBCUs in the surrounding areas missed a great opportunity to have a one. No, no, they did. But, you know, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think I'd have made it. What? I'd, have had, I'd have had 15 kids, man. I don't you know, know what? You <laughs> I don't, I don't know, man. I wasn't ready for that. I wasn't ready Jamie. for that. I know I wasn't. Jamie, you sound like uh, I heard an interview with Nate New, right? He played at Florida a &M, mm -hmm. Dallas Cowboy, right? Great player. Mm -hmm. um, and and he went to Florida a &M mainly because of his uh, family. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that's, you know, you was brought up to go to certain schools at the time, which is not a bad thing. I mean, because other schools do that, right? Right? Notre Dame will do that with their family. But he was saying like, like him and some other players. They also said like, man, if I go to an HBCU, I don't know if I'm gonna make it because of you know the time that you can have there. Um, so I guess that that's part of the the thing. But Deion Sanders even mentioned like when he was at Florida State, when he went to have his uh, entertain entertainment, have a good time, and you know interact with people, he would go to Florida and them, right? They both in Tallahassee. Yeah. Um, so that's just an interesting dynamic as well. Going back with Hot Tub was saying about how, you know, the yeah, the school surrounding the PWI, but as far as getting the, the culture piece of it, you know, mentioning a little bit about the HBCU school as well. But that's just an interesting dynamic. Um, Colby, Colby the Lord, do you have any questions you want to ask, Mr. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Wimble? Thank you for the last one. So 
you were saying like the outside noise from like HBCUs and like from that you probably wouldn't have made it. Was there any outside outside noise at the PWI that affected your game plan or you being there? Since it's a whole uh, different atmosphere. Uh oh, absolutely. Um, it's it, it's it absolutely. It's okay. This is the thing. You know. You know my 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 beautiful lady sitting right over there, so so you know it ain't no problem. But I gotta keep it a hundred. I, I I at, at the 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 eighteen year old Jamie Winmore loves some 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 sisters, and and we had some awesome ones there at our school too, right? Mm-hmm. But I'm what what I mean is, you know, we also had a lot of other races at our school. But I'm just if when I think about myself and how wild I really was, you know, wasn't no Instagram to catch you doing nothing. You know what I mean? None of that back then. It it was just I I just say I just don't I have a lot of respect for guys that I know that went to an HBCU just on the mere fact that like you didn't leave there with like a hundred kids. I just I mean I love our sisters. I love you know it it was just like a feeding ground. You know, I, I don't know if I could have stayed as focused. Cause see, at mm-hmm. my school, at my school, there's more of a spotlight on you at all times because there's not a lot of you here, black guys. Right, right. 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 They're checking your grades all the time to make sure you're doing what you're supposed to do at your school. Mm-hmm. You see, like you, I don't think you were here when I when I mentioned this before. I don't think I ever had a class where there was more than like five, six black people in the class. And that's out of a lot, right? So the pressure was always on me to perform academically. You, you see what I'm saying? Now you can get in just as much trouble with you know with the white girl over here, you know, because we had some of the listen, Playboy had us rated like number one for 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 white women. So what what I'm saying is so there and, and outside of that, um there was uh, when you, when you ask about was there any other distractions and stuff like that. Uh, mainly, once you become in the spotlight like that, it's like you gotta watch everything you do. You know what I mean? You can't be over here getting in trouble. Whereas you know, some guys may do something and nobody ever hear about it, mm-hmm. right? But I'm not that guy. You know what I mean? Like I really have to had to watch myself. There's my picture was my pitch my picture was up in the stadium my pictures up on billboards i ride down the road i'm seeing you know so of course people have to watch myself you know what i mean and um just be careful of things that i that 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 could come about but i did have great mentors around me um guys that try to keep me in 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 line and try to help me with decision makings and stuff like that and that and that that kind of helped me you know what i mean that really that really helped me but um you know i i just know myself and maybe I'm just speaking about myself, but I've, I've gone, I've gone, put it like this. When I go back to my homecoming, I usually go back to TSU homecomings and stuff too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Right. Like, because that's my, let me tell you, that's my culture. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's the difference. They're my culture. Vanderbilt is my alumni just by, by nature of me, who I went to. You see what mm-hmm. I'm saying? But TSU, MTSU, those are my people. So obviously they play the music that I like a lot more. However, I know the music on this at Vanderbilt, the alumni side too, but it's not really my music, if you understand what I'm saying. No, we definitely understand the culture. Yeah, we understand. Yeah. We got a question from the chat. Okay. I'm going to give that over to to Kobe to ask ask that question. So he was saying, what is like your thoughts on the weight room when you was in college and like you worked at the, in, the, in the weight room? Like, what's your opinion on the weight room? Oh, it, 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 uh, it, it's like air. You better be in, you better have it. You better get in there and get in it. Because see, this is the thing. Um, oh, now, I'm let me make sure I'm understanding your question right. You're not talking about it in comparison to something. You're talking about how important is the weight room. Yeah. Like I said, it's like air. See, because see what happens is you some a guy may not lift weights right then, and he may just have some good talent. 
but that is gonna that's not gonna keep working it is not gonna keep working because see there's a guy you don't know him you ain't never heard of him or seeing him but you're gonna come up against him one day and when he put them hands on you you're gonna realize that i should be in that weight room and plus that helps you from injury right yeah that helps you with injury of course, it's important because it's one of the tests at the combine. Right? How many times can you bench press two, 225? Right. You know right, what I mean? Right. And and when 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 a scout comes to us to a team, you're gonna always ask, how is his work ethic? Well, inside that work ethic is the weight room. How many let me tell you how good they are nowadays. When I used to work out, you could just, you know, you just say you did your workout and that's it, right? Well, when I went back to my college, I was like, man, things are sophisticated now because they have cameras on the weight weight bench. They have cameras on the, the, the squat. I can go in and say, okay, December the 26th, I can go in there, type this player's name in, and I can see every rep that he did. That's where our school is at with the weight room. Wow. And yep, say it one more time. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. What was your first impression of the weight room when you first visited the campus of Vanderbilt? I was amazed, man. Um honestly, I you know, my like I said, I come from Wetonka High School. You know, we you know, we we got we had really the basics in there. And obviously, I don't want to make it sound like we just didn't have nothing. You know, evolution has evolved. You know what I mean? Like the types of machines, what's available and stuff like that. Right. But when I first went there, I was like, good Lord, this thing is huge. They have yeah. they have snacks for you to eat. They come and make shakes for you. Like we, you got spotters anytime. You, you know, you got everything you need, man. There's There's no excuse right now. There is no excuse. This yeah. all is available for you. The only thing that's not in here is a person with the work ethic and the will to want to be better and to push themselves. You know what I mean? But that weight room is your friend, man. I, I'll tell any athlete, listen, man, you got to be in tip top shape. Like I can't, I couldn't count to you how many times I've just collapsed on the ground trying to work out like everything, bro. Like I, I, I get, I gave this, this game my life. You know what I mean? I risked it all. And to give you an idea how bad I feel about that, when my third year, remember I was telling y'all about the about the about the, the contract I got, right? Well, they all told all the doctors told me never to play again. I played seven years after that mm -hmm. with a metal Dedicate. plate, four screws in my neck. Actually, I just had another surgery, uh, like two years ago. You know what I mean? Like, I, I felt that strongly about the game. Like, this is what I do. God, I, I don't know how, but he put him, me here to do this. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I'm not a Hall of Famer or, or nothing like that. Or, uh, But, you know, I, I think I, I tried to maximize as much as I could get out of it, give and take what I had, you know, you know, the ability to do and, 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 and stuff, you know, and the weight room has always been my friend. I'm an undersized guy, right? So I don't have time to be playing around. I got to be in the best shape I can be in, in this body. And when I come out on the field from snap one, I'm like, I'm hype, bro. Like I'm ready to go because I'm not as big as these guys already. So how do I become as big? My incredible Hulk has to be already out. I ain't got time to wait on them to come to, to turn green. You, you get what I'm, you understand that? I got to be on, on Hulk every play. And or, or else I'm going to get pushed around. That's just the nature of the game. Hell, there's other, even big guys that get pushed around. But I just knew that I had to give it my effort, the highest effort that I could give it, because I really, truly felt like God blessed me to have this opportunity. Millions of people want to do this, man. In little old country, back road, you know, we, you know, dirt road, Jamie Winborn, who they found, has an opportunity to play against these guys that are like the best. I have to take advantage of this and I have to give it my all, bro. Like I had to, you know what I mean? That's why I'm so grateful, you know, to these people. You know, I learned a lot at the Niners. They gave me the chance, you know, and Vanderbilt too. I feel the same way about them as I do about Vanderbilt too, because they did not yeah. have to give me the opportunity that they got. And actually 
when I went there, I knew it was a great school and all of that, but I didn't really understand the significance of being able to tell people. OK, put it to you like this. When people ask me where did I go to college and I when I say the name Vanderbilt, they they know right off the rip. He may be a lot of things, but he no dummy. It's mm -hmm. far. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like that. right. You know? But they, yeah. they respect that in a whole different way. You know, that doesn't mean I don't do some bonehead stuff out here in the, in the world. I have. I did. Of course I did. That has nothing to do with like common sense, you know, but book sense. I had I had that, you know, I had to grow up as far as learning and making mistakes in life. Yo, you know what I mean? And that's, you know, that's where having the right people around you, you know, I think one of the biggest problems that people have these days, this this generation, honestly, is that they don't give the. The, the former people who have done what you were trying to do enough respect for what they did, mm -hmm. because see, they yeah. owe all the knowledge, right? All the little small keys, intricacies that you could do. You know what I mean? They hold that information and then they can give it to you. You know, anything you want to ask me, you can ask me. I've been there. I did it. You know what I mean? Like doing the dumb stuff, done it. Hundred, hundred miles an hour down the freeway, getting pulled over. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. You know, get everything except be late to a meeting. Nobody had me late. Never was late. Ten years. Never late. One time. You know what I mean? I take that, took that very serious, but I had to mature as a person outside the field. And then there's a whole nother game that goes on when 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 we talk about playing football and I'm a player. And then when I retire and I'm no longer a player. There was a time when I was the start. Like I see my picture up when they go through the film on, in at the game on the jumbotron. Like I, I went from being one of the guys highlights they showing me acting a fool to I don't see myself no more. <laughs> yeah, but I still gotta be that guy. Be the you know feel the same. I still have to give the same effort. But it, then it became more of just I was getting gratification out of watching the young guys come in and. And do their thing, and I'm trying. They call out. They started calling me OG real quick. Like after five, after five years, you like an OG in the game. So imagine when I got to like nine, ten. They like, you know, I said it. I'm old. That's how they feel. But but I have all the knowledge that they need. You see what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. we have to get together more, and I need more young guys like yourself to ask guys like me, "What's up?" You know, and I'm a realist type of guy. I'm gonna give you the blood raw truth. I don't do no faking. Back. I'm gonna tell you what for real. You go out here acting a fool. Potential bad things can happen that are life changing to you. You know what I mean? Like I'm that guy. You know what I mean? I, I I've been through it, and I just had to tell you how it is. Well, all right, hey, oh, big shout out to a uh, regular gun guy. Uh, thank you for your comment there. Yeah, yeah, he's a big <laughs> shout out here. He's already given his. Super Bowl prediction. Oh, oh, no. boy. Hey, listen. Can yeah, you block, it, it, can you block people over here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and he also says, "Hey, he's digging this. He's gonna he sub." Hey, hey, man, we definitely appreciate that, man. Mr. Yeah, Four man. One, appreciate you subscribing, man. Make sure everybody, everybody. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Please make sure you hit that that share button, like that, that subscribe, subscribe button. I mean. The help is needed. You know what I'm saying? Please do that for us. And uh, uh and, and again. Uh, we're still rolling here, but Jamie, I gotta go ahead and thank you, even in the middle of this episode, for giving your time for this, man. Uh, it's not, it's not like you had to do this, and but you're doing it, and it just shows, man. This is, you know, you're a great example. Um, if anybody's like wants to look up to to a, a, a sports athlete, I mean, this is an example of great, uh, first of all, a great person. You know what I'm saying? But on top of that, being one of the very few. That could say that they did what they, you know, what they accomplished in in, in their uh, professional career. Like, not so many people have ever played in the NFL. You know what I'm saying? 100%. So, you know, nah, you know, you you you. It's a blessing. It is a blessing, man. Yeah, and I, it's a blessing. I don't I do not take it for granted at, at all. Yes. I really, I really don't. You know, I got a ton of trophy stuff up over here and stuff and balls and all, you know what I mean and all that. But you know, I, at the end of the day. I think I value the fact of, you know, a lot of my brothers that I play with, it's a brotherhood. And, uh, you know, just the other day, like, like my, my buddy called me, uh, you know, 
Andre Carter, who was the first pick of my draft, he 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 just got the he just coaching the D line with the with the Raiders now. You know what I mean? Right. Like the New York the New York Giants, the guy that's their defensive coordinator. He played. We played beside each other. We we got football cards on there together. You know what I mean? So, you know when I see things, and then I see some of my guys' kids playing now, man, it just made me feel good. You know what I mean? Like, like yo, you know, time goes on, and the only thing you really can do in this world, at, at, you know, at, is try to be the better person and try to become a person that people respect. And um, everybody ain't gonna like you, but you know, just become a you know a, a decent dude. You know what I mean? Yeah, that, that, that mean a lot to me. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, Anna, Anna sums it up. Anna this, sums it up right there, man. About you. Oh yeah, 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 definitely. Um, you know I'm a cancer survivor too, right? Did I tell y'all that? No, nah, you ain't tell us that. Oh damn, man! Hold on, man! I'd have got I caught up in the football. Yeah, man. Um, so people would always ask me why I stopped playing, and I was like, "Yo, I didn't." This is crazy, right? God work a lot of ways. I get hurt one game or whatever. Didn't know nothing about this. On my 10th year, my agent was calling me the following. I kept getting sick going to the hospital. thinking they kept telling me it was food poisoning. Right? And uh, come to find out, man, I had rectal cancer. So I ended up having to uh, do the chemo radiation. You know what I mean? I had the colostomy bag for six months. We, you know, at that point, that end, that's the end of my career. At, you know, and then my agent kept calling. I, you know, I didn't know how to handle having the cancer. Right. I didn't I just didn't know what to say. I, I've been this stud guy all my life. And all of a sudden, like, why the hell I got this? Why do I got cancer? But I'm like, why? Wow, I, I, I had people cook for me. All, what, how did how this happen or whatever? And this is so crazy. I used to have these pains when I was playing for the. Uh, Titans, I, I a lot of the coaches like, yo, I gotta go to the bathroom. I be in there full pads and stall, like just like just balling, like, oh man, I don't mm -hmm. know what's wrong, but I don't have a, I don't have anything to tell the coach. You get what I'm saying? I go right back out there to nine on seven, smashing some more, but I'm hyped in nine on seven because I have to be because I'm in pain. That's why I'm here. But they think that's just normally me. But I, this time, you know, this time I'm in pain. So my career, so my contract was up for them. I ended up having to have the cancer. I did six months radiation. No, I did 25 treatments, radiation, and by the great, and then I did a uh, surgery, had the colostomy bag for six months. By the grace of God, they were able to reattach it. And uh, so I don't have to have the bag no more. I just got the, the, the scar and all of that. And, um, and, um, that that's that's pretty much how that happened and but you know my life was changed forever after that you feel me like i have what you call a j pouch you know what i mean i was cut in certain ways or whatever so mm -hmm. you know i and and which brings me to a lot of uh things where uh you know i do a lot of work mainly with mentorship with people that have cancer or you know just want mm -hmm. somebody to talk to and stuff like that you know what i mean i try to talk to them and you know, just let them know everything gonna be all right. Hey, I did it. It happened to me too. You can get through it. You know, just try to smile and laugh as much as you can and stuff like that. So it was dope. You know, as far as being able to speak to people and help them through a time that I know your mind goes a hundred, hundred different ways. You know what I mean? Like I'm mad with God. Like what are you doing? Like why would you do this to me? You know what I be doing? I got a hundred people depend on me. What you, what are you doing? You know what I mean? Like I got all kind of stuff going through my head. So and I didn't handle it well at first, to be honest with you. You know what I mean? Like after that, I I, I felt like I had ran out of time. Like like my time was running out in life. So what I do? I might party in now more than ever. You know what I mean? Like I'm just just trying to live because I feel like I'm running out of uh, time. Which wouldn't 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 wasn't right you know got in a lot of trouble out here and all that all this stuff clean my life up with that like just got back to uh, went through a divorce at the same time was going through a divorce at the same time you know what i mean i just had so much going on but uh you know i think that if 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 people hear me and look at me and see my life 
I just want them to understand that, guess what? You're going to get knocked down. It's like boxing. You're going to get knocked down. You know what I mean? You might get knocked out the ring, Holmes. Like, for real. Like, you might have that. I done been sitting in the jail cell with people. You know, they I, they was give, they were doing auto, autographs through booking. You feel me? Like, listen, my nickname, I was locked up one time, man, you know, for some dumbness. We won't talk about that part yet. Well, that's a whole other episode, but that's the point I realized to myself. What in the hell are you in here for, boy? Like, what are you doing? They're they're calling you Super Bowl in here, even though I never won no Super Bowl. I have a nickname in here. People come into my cell saying, "Hey, yo, asking can we play basketball today?" I'm like, "Man, why you don't ask them?" They like, "Cause they ain't gonna do it if we ask. If you ask, they gonna do it." And I'm like. Then I ask, and they do it. But it's like, what am I in here for? I got people that would that come in here. Let me tell you the worst, what really set my life apart. I mean, made me switch it up, right? I had a new cellmate that came in. Loves video games. You know what this man tell me? I can't believe this, man. I used to play with you on Madden all the time. And just hearing him say that, and I'm just like, what the hell are you sitting in here? You are, you you know you on video games, fool, and you in sitting, sitting in the cell? Like, what? Get your shit together and get back out there and do something good and positive. Because God is telling you, you don't post, you, this, is what, this is what lies behind. If you keep it up, this is where you go end up. And this is just the miniature end up. I'm just showing you a preview right quick of what it can be if you keep this way. But everybody don't get no preview. You feel me? So I had to get it together, man. But it all stemmed from the cancer. You, you see what I'm saying? So that's why I was saying I didn't handle everything properly, you know. But I got that back on track, yo, and just start putting all my time into these young kids out here, you know, like just trying to do something to show them, you know, hey, man, it's a struggle in life. But you got to keep going, bro, and you got to put yourself around the right type of people, you know, because everybody don't get a preview like I got. I got I just listen. Matter of fact, I saw a young kid first time charge one time. He was just in the car. They gave this boy 30 years, man. He ain't got no talk. He ain't never been locked up. He wasn't the shooter. He just got picked up in the car when that when, and it's like, dang, like how. I, and, and, and I have to sit here beside this boy crying and trying to console him. But how do I, what do, how can I console this young, young man when he didn't get a preview like I got? You, you hit on something, you hit on a lot with that. And if you open to it, we want to bring you back for another episode. Absolutely. You just focus on, on, on yeah, on, on, yeah. On yeah I'm sorry. You know, you know, I get thrown off sometimes. You know, I, no, no, like, no, you, no, you're good. <laughs> we 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 let you cook, bro. But that's I, I we see something for a whole other episode yeah. just on that experience alone. Yeah, yeah. But if you up, if you up, really? Yeah, no, 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 up. man. We could, we could, we could do what we could do. That is what I've dedicated pretty much my life to doing now. Yes, sir. You know, that's what make me feel good. And you James, the, you are yes, yeah, sir. And you're an inspiring people because a uh, shout out to Dre Carr because he. You know, I mean, he—I'm I, I'm safe to say this because you know he's my—he's my brother. He's—he's uh, he's my brother in officiating, and you know he had received some news as well, and you know he's battling through it and uh, in great spirits. But I think you just touched his heart, man, because you know he—he he made a comment here, and uh, you know he says cancer catches us all unexpectedly. Got to stay on top of overall health, routine yes. checkups, even if we feel a hundred percent. You know, yeah. thank you, sir, for sharing. And we have to do that, you know. I know, I know. A lot of us guys don't want to do the colonoscopies and things like that. Well, you we got, you know, we got to get checked up. You know, the age is yeah, it's, it's, it's went down. What is it now? I, I had it at thirty, and they recommended it at forty-five. Wow! But now wow. it's not. It's not forty-five anymore. They saying you need to you over thirty. You need to get in there and get checked. Yeah. Luckily, I found we caught mine in the nick of time. I stage two going to three. 
But you know, I tell people, hey man, get on in there, man. You don't want this nasty cut like I got. You know, I had to go back to the hospital again as well and do a you know nine hour bowel obstruction surgery. I was in the hospital for like four months. You see what I'm saying? Yes, I had sir. to do walking again, all that good stuff. But uh, you know, I'm blessed. I had you know a lot of support, stuff like that. But uh, mentally, you know, I went in some crazy places and. That's why it's so, so important to me to, to share my story, hoping that it'll somebody will see it and say, damn, you know, oh, dude, was the NFL? Yeah, I was a stud, I thought. You know what I mean? Hey, listen, I can't deflect no bullets. I can't, I can't, all the money I had in the all the money in the world couldn't buy away what I what had what, what came for me. You see what I'm saying? Yes, so I don't care about all that stuff no more. You know what I mean? I just care about people. Feeling better, man. You know, inside, you know, my fellow brothers and, and sisters, everybody, man. Like, I talk to a lot of people that have cancer and stuff like that, and I just try, you know, just try to be there for them when they need an ear, man. Somebody to talk to, ask some questions, you know, to help you get through it. Because since 2015, I've been, um, I've been um, in remission since 2015. So what's this now? It's nine years, bro. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's nine years now, man. You know what I mean? So I'm going to enjoy it to the end. You know, the, the Niners, they can help me if they go and win me a Super Bowl. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> I just, hey. Hey. And that's a great transition. Listen, my team, too, I want to say this, too. Yeah. That's another reason why I mess with them, bro. Yeah. You know, when they caught wind of what happened with me, you know what I mean? Like, honestly, man, they, you know, they said, but this, this before that cancer intercept stuff came out and all that, crucial catch. But they sent me a bunch of stuff, you know, for me to wear, put on, and stuff like that. You know that, you know, they don't even understand. And I, I told them, of course, but how much that meant to me, because at that time I wasn't feeling much about of, of nothing. I wasn't feeling like I had did anything in life because there's, it's only me and God and these doctors. You know what I mean, and and I, you know, I'm so appreciative for all the doctors out there that that that, that do their thing, man, and go to school for that and all, man. Cause your boy was up out of here without them. Wow, man, Real great story. message, man. Hell of a testimony, bro. Hell of a testimony. Yeah. And since we talk, kind of switch gears and transition a little, yeah, bit. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Don't have to apologize <laughs> for nothing, bro. Cause we. I, I really want to see you back on here when we have a part two to this because, bro, you are, this is one of the dopest interviews we done done right here. Okay, well, that's good. Hands down. Yeah. But want to kind of get your predictions on today's game. 35-14. But wait, before we begin to predictions, can I ask a question? Okay. Yeah, sure right. about, go ahead, though. You the young buck, man. You, you, <laughs> we, we, we stay on here all day for you. Yeah. So... Uh, Mr. Four One said it, but I'm a, a black male. I'm in college. I'm a freshman at George State, a PWI. Like, what would mm -hmm. be your advice to a black male that's just starting college at a PWI? And he was also an athlete at a PWI. Uh, to you know, this it's really the same thing, man. You know, it's just more about you know staying out of trouble, stuff like that. Um. I have I actually, matter of fact, this week I'm going back to my hometown to speak to my school. I speak to the eighth, ninth grade, I think, the first time, then the tenth through the twelfth, I think. And um, one, one of the, what the topics will be uh, is this: always be cautious of 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 how you are perceived. Now, when I say that, right, I'm really just talking about uh, character. Right. Like who you are. You know what I mean? You got to know what's what. Right. You know, you got the, the twigs. What's what, what you call that hair stoop style. Right. Yeah. 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 So. So listen, you smart enough to know that. Guess what? If, if I'm on the street walking by myself at night, it, you know what it could look like. Right. So get to where you need to go before it get dark. Or you need to be with more people. Now, I don't recommend them all to look have the things on their head <laughs> because see, you, that's just common sense. You have to look. You you have to always be cautious of what it, what 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 you what you're throwing out there. You know what I mean? There, um, 
what and and so like when you in, when you when you in school, you know, be a respectable person to talk to, to people, and don't don't you don't always have to be, because uh, you're gonna experience some things that make you want to just go off and fight, like you know what I mean, like who you think you talking to, but you always take a step back and use your head, because in thirty seconds, it could change your whole life. You know what I mean? So yeah. now, and with that being said, it's like, you know, hey, you may have a professor that you feel like, man, this professor always messing with me. He, you know what I mean? He just got an attitude with me for nothing, right? Well, you got to be smart enough to know that if if that's the case, you still got to figure out a way how to pick 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 him to figure out what's what some potentials of might be on this next test. Don't lose sight of what's going on. You get what I'm saying? That's that's that that's what I mean by that. You know what I mean? Like those are the things that I had to do at school. I had a professor that did not like me at all. But by the end of the year, he saw this kid here gives more effort than any of my students. By the time I had an inclination of what was going on, what what I what I might need to be studying. You see what I'm saying? Because one thing everybody respects. You know what I'm saying? Listen. This, and this is the truth, and I tell my buddy this, and people didn't like how I told him this. Every person on this earth really loves effort. If they can see that in you and that it that you care, when I'm grading your paper, that B plus might just be an A minus. Mm. You did. You see what I'm saying? So. So what I mean is, it's like your character means everything. You know what I mean? Like, and y'all growing up in a time where social media is here, right? So be very cautious and aware of what you're putting out there. Because I give you an example. I say, you know, I've been, I speak about courtrooms a lot because obviously I've been in them a lot, right? You know, whether it's somebody trying to sue me or something crazy that I did, right? I saw a judge getting ready to let a kid who had been locked up for 10 years, getting ready to let him, let him uh, 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 go, right? The DA pulled up and said, hold on, judge. You know they got phones in prison, right? They found a recent picture of him throwing up gang signs on a photo, and this judge did not let that boy go home. So what mm -hmm. I'm saying is, in this new era, be cautious of what you're doing on that. You know what I mean? Like, don't get caught up on nobody camera doing that stupid that you don't supposed to be doing. You know what I mean? See, those are all ways to trick yourself out of an opportunity, right? Look at, it, there's no reason for that. You know what I mean? Like, you just want to, you just want to keep yourself in the right on the right track. If your friends want to do something crazy, hey man, I can't do that right now, man. You know, I know that's not easy, but you better get it done because. It's, you're not gonna be judged the same as they will when, when when if you get caught for something. You know what I mean? I ain't got time. Listen, I ain't got time to tell you the jive about it and tell you a lie because the judge ain't gonna lie to you. He gonna get he they gonna put it to people. You know what I mean? So be cautious of your friends, right? Surround yourself by people who wanna be who wanna go somewhere. People got aspirations like you. You feel me? You should know a lot of. People that, that want to do podcasting and stuff like that. You know, stick around. Those type of people, people that have the same visions as you, bro, you'll be just fine. You already got the work ethic. You know what I mean? You you, you know one you know one dude. You know what I mean? Jamie Winwood, you already know him. You're you going to have his phone number. And you we want to make that interview happen with him, too. Yeah. So let's make it happen. There it is. Man, that man, like Jane Grant just said, good advice. Oh man, great, advice. great, great advice, man. That is amazing, man. That that's priceless right there. Um and, and look, Jamie, yeah. you you might have been shooting that message over the code, but uh look, I'm over here listening myself. Got my notes down, brother. Notes, bro. Oh yeah, you, you you got to, man. You know, I don't know everything, but I can give you my piece from of my experience and what I done been through and seen out here, you know. It's it's you know, and that's how we have to do it, collectively get together and share experiences and knowledge with each other. Cause that's the only way we're gonna. That's the only way we're gonna. Go, we're gonna get better and make it, man. You feel me? That that that's the truth. That's the truth. Yes, yes sir.
Okay, so on that note, we'll we'll, we'll pivot now to the Super Bowl. Uh, I, I got a feeling you're gonna pick the 49ers, but I'm a real way that you can is there where you can break down this Super okay. Bowl? Listen. Was what? How can the Chiefs win? Okay. How can the Niners win? Listen, this is what it is, right? So we know uh, Shanahan been to what two Super Bowls already? Man, don't get me started on the first one. Okay, but that's but, <laughs> right. But 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 this is the thing. We have not played the 49 We have not played a really good game, complete game, in like the last five, six weeks. Five, six games. This is true. See, I feel like it's time to let all of it out right now. And we just need it all to happen for us on the right time. We mm-hmm. ain't got to be the better team on paper. Even though we are. But that don't matter. We just need to be the best team for three hours. Mm-hmm. We just need to be better than them for three hours. We know they got uh, Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid over there. The kid mm-hmm. Rice, who 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 is awesome in Kelsey and the Swifties. We know all about them. Hell, I just heard a song. My daughter don't like their song. Everybody like their music, like her music. She fine. You know what I'm saying? But guess mm-hmm. what? But, but 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 listen. But none of that plays on the grass. It is. And when it comes to the coaching, right? Shanahan is the son of my guy, his daddy, Mike. Mm-hmm. So you think that he ain't asked his daddy what I need to do to get over this hump? This is my third time. I need a ring, Dad. Dad, what do I do? Guess what his daddy going to tell him? Son, do what the hell I did. You got, I had Terrell Davis. You got Chris McCaffrey. Run the ball, <laughs> son. <laughs> and defensively, we got to make plays. We got to tackle. I think we'll do it. Fred Warner, a beast. I love him. Greenlaw, a monster. You know what I mean? Both, so we need them, him and Chase, and, and, and the rest of them D line. We need y'all to really get to it. You know them, you know ammonia, you know what ammonia is, right? Oh, yeah. Well, we need to put about 50 of them in a water bottle. Y'all need to hit this <laughs> so you go out there. Hit that. Cause we ain't coming out. Don't come out here slow today. Yeah. This ain't, team, this ain't no Detroit Lions. Nah. You cannot afford to come out slow. This right, powered off. Teams playing. don't make. We don't. You know, this is not that kind of team. You know, this is this is the end, bro. We got. If you got a superhero, you need to make him come out before you come out the tunnel. And that's the truth. I think that's gonna happen. I think we match up well with them. You know what I mean? Because they like the they love zones, and we like zones. You know, we we'll mix up a little pressure on them, but our players they run and they make the tackle. You know, that's what zone is good for. You know what I mean? And I think that's what we're going to do. But it's going to boil down to that running game and, uh, you know, making the tackles and making the plays when you need to. Yeah. And um, I believe that we'll do that. Like I said, I believe that he will check with his dad. He will give. He will have given some advice. If I'm not mistaken, I think Mike's there. Um, that's going to be big for him. You know, it's going to be big for the team. You know we deep there now, right, mm-hmm. in Vegas. We got, we got, man, we we got so many people yeah. there, man. This man, we done lit this thing up with the Red Sea, man. Bay Area, West, on the West Coast, on court, yeah, yeah, yeah. They right there, right next door. Yeah, man, we we off the trip, well, man. We, we we ready, man. Like, I get so tired of people talking about this. Brock Purdy ain't this. Brock, listen, man, this is football. The only thing that matters is winning. Now your personal contracts and shit, that's your that's your money. We don't we can't do nothing with that shit. That's your money. <laughs> but, but, but you go out here and win a ball game for us, son. And you ain't gotta have no money wherever you go. Church. You know what I mean? And I think Purdy can do it. I know we facing the great Patrick Mahomes. Who don't know that? Right? But but Patrick has to play. And he better play well, or he's gonna be at home. Now that's, that's how, how great. How, how great do you think Patrick Mahomes is? Where do you, where does he stack up at this point in the history of the game? Shit, he. I mean, he's he he's he's immaculate, but he, he's also listen. He's immaculate, but let's not be fooled. He's in a different generation. Mm-hmm. Okay. You when when somebody fall on his legs, guess what they doing? They pointing to the referee flag. Oh, it wasn't none of that back 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 when we back when we played. 
You see what I'm saying? You can't hit a guy and intimidate him no more. Your receivers can run freely. Mm-hmm. See, yeah. back then, see, when Shannon Sharp was playing, Shannon Sharp clutched that ball. You know, we come across, we're trying to come across that with the with the bow to the head, to the neck. Take the head off. You sit type stuff. And he was a baller within that, all of that happening. So I think that people forget now they always talk, they talking about numbers and this and that. I was like, yo, I get it. He is he is by far an amazing talent. But I cannot compare him to guys that come out of a whole nother era and part of this new era. Tom was Tom when you could knock somebody completely out. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Then it changed, yeah. and he still was him. So his numbers yeah. are going to be much better. Of course they're going to be better. You can't touch a receiver. You can't hit nobody. You can't touch yeah. nobody. A defense lineman can't even fall to your knees. If he's trying to rush you, he falling down, it's a flag. You get extra down. You get to play more. So how can you compare that guy to guy to these other guys? You know what I mean? Like obviously, ability wise, he's awesome. But we ain't gonna go by them numbers, bro, because that's skewed. They didn't even I, count. I, listen, and back in some of my statistics, they didn't even count pressures. Oh, okay, interesting. Yeah, yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah. They didn't count pressures, bro. So, come on now. I mean, hey, it is it, a different game now, man. You know, and but he is great. He is super talented. I mean, he has the potential to to be named as one of the best if he continues yeah. on. Yeah. You know, you only take one play, and you may never play again in your life. Yeah. But as far as what he's been doing on the at the rate he's going, he's gonna be have amazing numbers. I know one category he already did that was just amazing, and that's that damn contract. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. Hey man, I, yeah, I, almost, yeah, I, I almost choke when I saw them zero. I was like, half a billion to play the same game that I played? What do you mean? That highlight how far the game mama, long why? In the 20 years, bro. Listen, I wanted to say, Mama, what the hell you put a football in my hand for? It didn't make me throw it. Quarterback. <laughs> but hell, I wasn't five and up. I wasn't gonna be that anyway. So you hey. know it is. Is. I appreciate what it is, but but yeah, he has the potential, bro. He's yeah, he's he's up there, but I'm not gonna put him in no Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers. I'm not putting him in all them categories just yet, only because of, of his career. Oh. You know, when he get to like year eight, nine, and he's still on this path, I, you know, I give he's a winner. That's no doubt about yeah. it. But he's gonna mm-hmm. lose to Brock Purdy. Yeah. It's this kid. <laughs> it's a great. It's a great story, bro. Like the kid is awesome, man. They talk that noise all they want to, but listen. They, and then they say, well, you could have threw any quarterback in there, and he could have did the same thing. Boy, quit no. playing with yourself. No. Do you know? You know You know. in the NFC Championship he went down that just last year. We couldn't win with Chris. We couldn't win with just run with Chris McCaffrey. With McCaffrey. We, you know, you got to understand, it's a team game, bro. Mm-hmm. And he fits perfect for the team. He just. We need one more game out of him today. One more, Ooh. one more. We about to say hey, these guys. Hey, these guys might have might have uh, played before you, but uh, like a Dan Marino, a John Elway, yeah, 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 uh, Warren Warren Moon, uh, you know Jim Kelly. Just just mm-hmm. to throw a couple of them out there, but and Joe Montana, come on now, can't forget awesome, him. Awesome. But like, but how do you think they would have played in this type of era? You know what I'm saying? Uh, I think they would have been. They would. They'd have more passing yards. They'd have, they'd have more. You couldn't touch nobody. You can't touch nobody now. We used to be able to play. Guys used to be able to play back then. Like what I mean, play. It's like yo, the one on one matchup outside. You look at the Dion's because they show this all the time. Dion and Andre Rising, uh, one on one battles out there. Mm-hmm. Man, they out there really in each other's face. You oh, know what I mean? Like Daryl Greens and. And Charles Woodson's and these people are really, you know what I mean? They are really in guys' face having a good time and, and you know and being challenged. But now they throwing the flag so quick and, and they don't want nobody to get touched. And, and that's for safety reasons. And I get that. You know what I mean? Because trust me, you know, you see my neck, you know, it's messed up. I get that, you know. But um I think those guys would have been awesome. 
I think they would have been had more yards. That's pretty much the, the, the that that you know. I mean, if you could run, you could run. But I think the way that Patrick has done and, and is playing is uh, he's he's definitely elite and on another level. And uh, the only thing remains to be seen from him is the longevity of his career. That's it. Okay. All right. Uh, hold on a sec. Kobe, you, you, you got any comments on the Super Bowl? Oh, this is just our uh, comments right now. Oh, we're doing predictions. Just throw a roll it all in there. No problem. Oh, I ain't gonna be my... And I ain't going to be mad at you. Oh, I'm, gonna <laughs> my... I'm just going to call you back. No, nah, I'll just play. <laughs> I'm going to throw my comments out there first. Gotcha. Uh, two, two great teams. Two very talented teams, mm-hmm. but one team just have more experience than another. One team has one quarterback I just don't trust as much as I do the other quarterback. One team we thought would have lost three weeks ago, week after week after week, and kept on winning. The other team was getting bailed out. So you all take the Chiefs in a close game, beating the 49ers. And my reason being, don't get too mad at, mad at Mr. Jamie. <laughs> But the reason is, mm-hmm. I had I had Chiefs losing against Dolphins. Dolphins, we could argue this year was a better team. Dolphins won. A lot of people had the Bills beating the Chiefs. We could argue that Bills a better team. The Chiefs won on the road twice. Mm-hmm. Took it to Baltimore. Beat your reigning MVP mm-hmm. on the road again. Three times he has beat the odds every single week. The 49ers, Green Bay, didn't look good. The defense decided to take a day off mm-hmm. against, against the Lions. If you don't go for it twice and True. you miss those opportunities, you lose the game. We can't say you're in the Super Bowl right now. Your quarterback been getting trash talked on, which I think he would have a great game. But when the pressure gets on him and he's playing from behind, can't he catch his team up? You got Debo. But once Debo get frustrated with everybody, he don't know how to play no more. You find some way to you find some way to isolate Nick Bosa and, and isolate Fred Warner. What are they gonna do? Because you got a pretty decent uh, O line if you're the Kansas City Chief. It's just your receivers that are the problem. You let Travis Kelsey get rolling. Now you got a problem because now do you want to put Fred Warner in man? You gonna keep playing him his own all game? 49ers, Now you got to hold Christian McCaffrey decide to have the game of his life. And I told Mr. 401 this, if you want the 49ers to win, you better have Debo and McCaffrey both in the run and pass game confusing everybody. Because you already might put the Jersey C on uh, Brandon Ayuk because we could argue that's the best receiver. You don't know where Debo is going to be the whole time. And one team, we've seen the Super Bowl before, which was the 49ers. They was here. That Super Bowl team, I want to say 2020, 2021, that team really has not changed except for a couple DBs and the quarterback. We're pretty much just looking at the same team, and plus Christian McCaffrey. I'm sorry. And now you got Christian McCaffrey. We're pretty much looking at the same 49ers team. Is that same 49 team, can they beat that same Patrick Mahomes team without Tyreek Hill? But they've been winning without Tyreek Hill three weeks in a row. So I'll take the Chiefs, I'll say 28-24, somewhere in the four to three-point uh, range. Now, look at that. Talk your talk, Kobe. <laughs> oh, hey, and, uh, y'all, got, y'all got me my element now. I got yeah, my yeah, element. Yeah, that is, that is <laughs> element. Oh, that is, <laughs> hey, you know, you know, you know what you're doing, man. You know what you you've been watching and you know football. You know, hey, you know what? I wish I could, I wish I could have told uh, 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 Shanahan that too. You know, you you brought up a very valid point. You do need to have them boys confused by throwing and pat. You need to throw more to Chris McCaffrey and, and have them both yeah. in the running pass game. That was brilliant, bro. You you know what, man? You be watching, bro. You, hey, man, you got talent, bro. Hey, 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 my hey, my first my first bonding time, my stepfather was chalk talk. We was on the board writing play. That's my first bonding time. So yeah, I know how to dissect football. No, yeah, yeah, you definitely do. You know how to articulate it back out. Yeah, that's the most important <laughs> part. <laughs> I can draw. You can draw. A person can draw it up all day, but can you tell somebody what what the hell is really going on out here, and what if what which way you need to sway, and you know to manage it and make it happen? And you can do that. Yeah, you do fine, yeah. bro. You fine. That's you fine right. now. Yeah, that's why. But, but you're still wrong. Listen, 
<laughs> no, honestly, I, I, I think you, you have all very, very valid points. And, man, you know, I don't know, man. I'm just excited for the day. You know what I mean? I can't wait, bro. Like, you know, it's, I couldn't hardly sleep last night. Opportunity, man. That opportunity is here, bro. Like, it's here. Hey, no matter what. Down. We, every, there's a million opinions and the spreads and what you did in the past and this and this and this. But, man, you get a chance to be there and do it. You, you can change history. Just imagine it. You can rewrite it yeah. right there. You know what yeah. I mean? That's, how cool is that? Mm. If we knew who was going to win for real, we wouldn't even play the game. That's right. And, you, you and, that, and, and that spins into uh, the conversation we did have. And I do appreciate Cole from the low inviting Mr. Paul yeah. on to his show Thursday night. You know, we talked about uh, a couple things I brought up was the turnover battle. Like, who's going to win the turnover battle? You know, that, that that's going to put teams in predicaments. So, uh, if 49ers can, cannot turn, have silly turnovers, things like that, ball control. And the one key about Patrick Mahomes uh, this season, I think his uh, yards per pass is, is kind of crazy. It looks like he's around seven, eight yards. It's like, you know, that, I think, he's a why, why is that? This is the yeah. best Super Bowl that we're going to probably have in a long time. Because yeah. see, this is the thing. You got two different guys. You you know, when you play football or, or anything in a neighborhood, you know what I mean? You typically have this guy that's just really good out there. Yeah. And he's a winner. But we had this other guy who has surprised everybody, and he's a winner as well. So there may be some turnovers. There may be all of that. But it's like, yo, who's going to rise above what? Everything. Because yeah. this is just an awesome game, man. I, I really like it. I mean, you know, obviously I want the Niners to win, but I think the, the football level is really gonna be good this 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 game. Cause two the coaches, I, I like the I like both of them. Um I'm just excited, man. It's gonna be some really good football. But I I am I'm think I I'll tell you what I thought. 30 I thought 35 14. 35 14. Absolutely not. Yeah, we do you, no, do you not know who's on the other side of that field? Bro. Listen, man, if we get going, listen, bro, we hit Kittle for one good one, come back and hit Ayuka. See, listen, everybody talking about what if the if 49ers get down. But yeah. if you get your ass down, Chiefs, yeah, you know we know but, what to do. But, hey, they, they whole season is played from behind. Yeah, but that ain't the day. Oh, that <laughs> day. Hey, hey, that was that a couple years us. ago. That was a couple years hey. ago. You get your head behind on us, and we're going to put the chokehold on. Hey, but you, hey, you had one weak factor in, <laughs> in, 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 in your uh, offense. You know what that was? Brock mm. Purdy. Because you get oh. if that game goes down to who who experienced and when experience who? shows, Brock Purdy is not going to come through when experience shows. And I'll give you a perfect example. Jordan but what if we intercept? What if we intercept Patrick Mahomes, though? What if we intercept him? And, he, and he's coming right back. Well, what if we intercept it again? This, this, this is what I like about Patrick. This is what I like about Patrick. And Patrick <laughs> Mon, he can throw five interceptions. You better let him get one touchdown. Yeah, but here's one of my key, but here's one of my key concerns. But here's one of my key concerns, though, is that you know, ever since Tyreek Hill has has been no longer on that team, is it's been a tougher tougher sledding as far as they go offensively. Like the threat of uh, Hill breaking the top of the defense. It opened up so much for for it unlocked a whole lot for that offense. And it's it, now Patrick Holmes went to another Super Bowl without him, won another Super Bowl without Hill. But it it but it's been tough. It's been a tougher road. We saw frustration this season with Patrick Mahomes throughout the season with drops from Tony. Uh, who that would be crazy if he turned out to be MVP. I'm gonna turn. But, on, I'm, I got I gotta go somewhere real quick. I'll be right back. Okay, no problem. No problem. But uh, Kobe, you know we did talk about that, Kobe. You know what I'm saying about. You know the change there with the uh, with the Chiefs, but hey, with that said, Patrick Mahomes still has his team in the Super Bowl and one road but game. I like the Chiefs. Mm -hmm. A lot of people. Gentlemen. A lot of if if y'all watched the documentary on Netflix called Quarterback, Patrick Mahomes said it himself. A lot of people thought with Tyreek Hill gone, it was going to be a big change, and he said it. He said, "I've lost one of my best receivers in the game." Yep. But I still got to the Super Bowl, and I won another Super Bowl without him. No doubt about that. Uh, tell him, did you tell him, did you have your uh, thoughts on the Super, uh, your your prediction on Super Bowl? I actually got to step out real quick, but I do have. I'm gonna leave y'all with this. 
I think it's going to be way closer. I got the Chiefs by three. I think it's going to break down. To, you got you got two teams evenly matched, bro. Mm-hmm. It's going to break down to two things, defense and coaching. So, yeah. I think Chiefs by three. Uh, that's where I'm going to leave it at. But I got to step out. Jamie, hell of an interview, bro. Hell of an interview. We want, yep. we want to have you back for a second one. Let's do it. Let's oh, yeah. do it. God bless oh, yeah. you. Yeah, we we're we're down we're down to the uh to the end here anyway. So uh I want to make sure I'm, we I'm give gonna, our thanks. I'm gonna fall back and I'm yes, sir. Kobe, you I tell. take the hand for me, bro. <laughs> we appreciate you, I tell. Hey, we'll bro. catch you next week. Black I'll history. Be. We coming back at it. Hey, Jack, we're gonna have you back home, bro. Okay, I no doubt, All right. man. All right, just bless. All right, Tug. And yes, uh, I have the 49ers winning the Super Bowl. Uh, I think it's going to be a close one. But I think the Niners, they'll score a late touchdown and win and, and win this game. Uh, but it has all the recipes of being a great Super Bowl. I like what Tony said. He, he said um, two teams are evenly matched. But realistically, they're not. But in a, in a way, they are. And if we, go talent wise, if we go talent-wise and performance-wise, the 49ers got it. But we go experience wise, been there before, got to play from behind. Knowledge wise, the the Chiefs got it, and realistically, that would make the team evenly matched. Yeah, yeah, I, I think their defense. See, this is this is the thing. You know, uh, experience wise, yeah, I, I, they they have some experience, but you know, with them, you know, some of the players on our team have been. To, this is their second Super Bowl as well. You know what I mean? There's a couple. There's yeah. some people on our team as well. But see, my thing is, is okay. When I look at it from a defensive standpoint, I look at what can we do to to stop them on offense. Mahomes gets a lot of plays on broken downs, right? He yeah. scrambles around, makes it happen. Well, I feel like we have players that can make that happen. That that can that can uh, make that happen. And and I know our defense, you know. You can't just be throwing that ball around left and right here and there. You know, a mistake could be deadly. You know what I mean? And and same for both ways, you know. So in a fact, in, in to to some point, there is an evenly matched thing. You know, we can't be playing around with their defense like that either. Right. You they know, solid defense yeah. yeah. And, and you know, we gotta stop Chris Jones. We got to, you know, because he just can mess up a lot of stuff, but uh like you said, overall, I think it'll be a great game, man. Uh, really happy that they made it there. Um, as long as usually, I got to root for the Niners, you know what I mean? And and I, I'm not really into that close game type shit, I, you know, stuff. I don't, I don't, I think, <laughs> I think we're going to, I think we're going to put the whammy on them. And because that's what I want, man. I don't just want to, I don't want the 10 count. I want the TKO. <laughs> All right. You want that Mike Tyson? Go ahead. And I want that Mike Tyson. Lay him man. out. Listen, man, I ain't doing no Mayweather to the to the to the to the bit to the bit. <laughs> and, 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 you know what I'm saying? And, and judges and all that, man. He on the flow. They on the flow. They got 14 points. We got 35. It's time for him to go home. E40 gonna come on. Gonna come rush this rush rush down those stay on, on the field. Take over. <laughs> we wild, man. Yes, <laughs> Not a game. <laughs> All right. Wait, well, look, Jamie, I appreciate you being on. Uh, yes, appreciate sir. Kofi the Low. Appreciate Hot Tail Tone. Appreciate everybody who tuned in and watched. To appreciate everybody who hit the subscribe, the like, the share. I mean, what an episode, man. And we definitely appreciate you pulling back the curtain, sharing some important messages to our, to, to all of our listeners, man. Um, yes, you definitely, you definitely a real one, man. And, and uh, definitely have to have you back. Um, please come back. Oh, I, I definitely will, man. And uh, you know, we'll get brother Kobe my my info and stuff. You know what I mean? And uh, we, yeah. you know, we try to get him rolling too, man. I appreciate y'all, man. And 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 Kobe, like I said, man, hey, man, you, you very, 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 extremely knowledgeable about the game, and uh, you bring up some very, very good points. You got you got me thinking, and I'm gonna be thinking about it when I'm watching the game. Like, boy, young buck told me that, but he said it. <laughs> You know what he talk, but you do. You know what you're talking about. I mean, I know the lingo, and I know you know, I know what's going on, man. And um, you know, much 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 success to you. Like I said, I was telling telling my, we'll get you my number, and uh, however I can help you out, bro, just just hit my line, bro. I got you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh man, excellent, excellent. All right. Well, for Kofi the low, Mister Four One, 
and NFL legend Jamie Winborn. We'll catch you all on the other side. Appreciate everybody tuning in. Enjoy the Super Bowl. All right. We out of here. Niners win. All right. (laughs) 